Hello and welcome to Behind the Blinds. Today I have Jerome Godwin with me. Thank you for having me today. Anytime. <laughs> welcome to my fancy, fancy room. Yes, this is amazing, honestly. Thank you. Thank okay. you. I you know, brought my own decor. Right. It's so fun. You put in work. I got the pleasure of watching your blind before anybody else, but if you're watching, you should absolutely go check it out. Go check it out. Go check it out wherever you can. And you sang a song by Miss Ariana Grande. Yeah. Ma'am. Tell me just a little bit about like how the whole experience was for you. So so some of you may not know, but I auditioned before. I auditioned on season 19 and I did not get a chair turn, right? Um, my song Lay Me Down, my first experience, and I didn't get a chair turn and I was bummed, but I went back to the drawing board nice, and found a song that works for me that I hadn't performed before because I thought I was a little bit too comfortable <laughs> the first time. Yes. So this time I put in some extra work. Um, got the song POV by Ariana Grande. Yeah. I had never sang that song before, actually. So I was also a little bit nervous. So, but the experience overall, it was really good. I was anxious a lot of the time, Feel <laughs> of course, but um, it was a really good experience. Um, once those chairs turned, like all of the anxieties, all the stress, that, all the worry that I was experiencing up until that moment, just like instantly melted away. And it was like the the most amazing experience. So, Good. Yeah. That's awesome. This being your second time, that's crazy. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yes. You and Tiana both right. on Team Nile, which is cool. Mm -hmm. How was it different this time around when you were standing backstage? Because I'm sure the first time you're just like, eh, I'm doing this. Yeah. This time, was it like more pressure, less pressure, just mm. different? Like, what did it feel like back there? Right. This time, I would definitely say that it's, it's, it was more pressure. Mm -hmm. um, even though my mom wasn't here this time, the first time I auditioned, I was a minor. So I had my guardian with me every step of the way. Yes. But this time I went through solo. Up to the performance, it was definitely a lot of pressure that I was feeling because... I don't know if I can even say this, but I was on the last day, right? Yeah. So that comes with pressures. I mean, there's mm -hmm. a couple of spots left and you're wondering, am I going to get through? I've been out here for like a month. Am I, yeah. am I going to get to perform? Am I going to get a chair turn? So uh, that's where a lot of the pressure came from. But I mean, it worked out. I mean, clearly. Clearly. <laughs> and we're yeah. on Team Nile. Team Nile. Mm -hmm. ah. who, who were the coaches the first time you tried okay. out? Season 19, it was Blake Shelton. Gwen Stefani, John Legend, and Kelly Clarkson. Okay. Mm, nice panel. Yeah. Very very nice spread. Were you more or less excited or just did you feel different when you found out that now we have instead Chance and Niall added right. into the mix? I was more excited because, I mean, that's fresh faces. I mean, it, it brings a little, you know spin to the show. Like, you don't know what they're going to do. You don't know if they're good coaches or not, but our coaches has He's, he's, he's a good coach. Okay. <laughs> he's great. Yes. I was very excited. Like when they told us in the the first interview who they were, I was like, Wait, what? For the order, like that we would choose. I was like, Niall, Chance, Kelly, and Blake. And yes. hey, I went with Niall. So I, I stayed it. true to my word. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So it was cool. Why was Niall your top pick? Like, what was it about him? <sighs> I would say he was my top pick because. I viewed him as like the underdog, him and Chance, yes. like they're the underdogs and they have something to prove. Totally. So I like knew that they were going to be fighting harder. So mm -hmm. I kind of came in with that notion and he did fight harder. It came down to Kelly and now because they both turned, he said a lot of a lot of great things and he was fighting a lot harder um, for me. So I was just like, I got to go with him. Okay. And I told everybody in the nation that I would be going with <laughs> Niall. <laughs> so you so stuck just with like, your word. Yeah, yeah. I don't want nobody mad at me. Okay. I love that. <laughs> Uh, yes. Did he say anything on stage that like you will remember forever where you were like, oh, my God, that was so awesome. Or like, haha, I can't believe he said that. Like, Right. I mean, th everything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like the compliments. Like, I mean, th these are people that I've listened to growing up, like yeah. back in elementary school and to for them to say that I, that you have a great voice, like that's that's insane. So it's crazy. Everything that they said, even them just turning their buttons and them looking at me. <laughs> yes, yeah, it, it was crazy. So, yes. yes. And were you so relieved having done it before? Once the chairs turned, you were like, "I'm done. I'm free. I'm good." <laughs> right. Yeah. Honestly, honestly. Um. Okay. So going through the song, I was like, once they got the chair turns, I was like, okay, <laughs> I'm not trying. <laughs> yep. We're gonna keep it right there. Okay. I'm not gonna do nothing extra because I don't want them to be like, uh. <laughs> right keep it safe keep it safe Finish and then the song. just show them later on yes. <laughs> right so that was that was me so i was like we, we gonna you know hold back until the next round kind of random question mm -hmm. you're wearing a great gray hoodie right now yes. we got great gray hoodies yes from nile mm -hmm. if it was you in that chair 
what gift would you give Ooh. your contestants? What gift I would give my contestants? Whether it's just something you would have wanted or like this is the Jerome brand I always wear, <laughs> you know, this. This would probably be like very expensive. I mean, it's the voice. Like uh, maybe some sort of pair of shoes because I love shoes. Yes. Like, And it's been a dream of mine to have my own shoe because I, I wanted to be like in the NBA growing up. I was more sports. Okay. And so yeah. So Troy I was Bolton more of the team. Yeah. And I was yeah. just like, I'm gonna have my own, you know, shoe on, you know, with the Nike or whatever. For sure. So I was like, you know, maybe a little shoe or something. I love that. Never <laughs> yeah. too late. Right. Never too late. Nike mm-hmm. sponsor. Nike sponsor <laughs> me. Okay. A little matching shoe moment. Mm-hmm. Which speaking of fashion, I saw the outfit. Mm-hmm. The orange shirt. Iconic. Looked so good on you. Thank you. Walk me through what you were wearing, the shoe. What? How'd you feel about the outfit? Tell me the whole story. Okay. So the outfit that I actually had on is I brought all of those items with me. So it's nice. straight from my closet. So I don't even know what the material is. Like a silky orange shirt. Yes. And usually I do dull colors. So that was a pop of color for me. Something that I'm not really you know used to or cu- accustomed to yes um had black pants and some shoes that i found on sheen incredible <laughs> sheen. so yeah that was my fit and that shirt was horrible <laughs> to manage oh. okay because i could not sit down without it getting it wrinkly wrinkle. yeah oh. so they would steam the shirt with me in it i had to take off the shirt between interviews so they could re-steam it so I yeah. mean, in my opinion, it was worth it because it looked it was, great. It was worth it, but I'm not. But never doing again. It again. Yeah. <laughs> no more silk. We're done. Definitely. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Was there anyone that you saw during the blinds that you were like, okay, I'm stealing your outfit or I'm stealing that piece of your outfit? Okay. Um, and I'm trying to think back to people's fits. I saw a lot of ladies and they had some nice, you know, clothes on, like very fashionable. I was like, this is. <laughs> past the blind stage like a lot right. of y'all were dressed down so for sure. yeah for sure. yeah um a lot of the guys were like stuff that i would wear yeah. <laughs> yep. so yeah um i'm not really sure if there was yeah. anyone specific mm-hmm. but overall the fashion I yeah feel like the fashion was, was nice on point y'all did great y'all did great obviously people are gonna hear the blind audition and it sounds lovely mm-hmm. but that's just like one side of what you do right what do you hope people find about you or like mm-hmm. where your music goes from this that they can discover after hearing right. you sing? I say like the kind of artist I am, I am. I like pop and R&B music. That's the mm-hmm. kind of music that I like to sing. But I have deep roots in gospel and soul. Yeah. So like I always find a way to, you know, carry those roots with me and incorporate it to whatever song that I sing. So POV, it's very, you know, it's a pop song, pop ballad kind of ish. But I just try to put, elements in that kind of show uh, the kind of artist I am so the soul touches a little run here and there you know yes. so yeah after the show I'll try to release some music and that'll kind of sound like uh yeah. the same thing kind of the pop and R&B with the soul twist to it so if you're into that I think you could vibe with it for sure I love that mm-hmm. that's awesome are you much of a writer like do you songwrite a yes, lot yes I do songwrite a lot um I actually write some songs uh for a lot of people who try to sing gospel yeah. uh, music and whatnot. My church, uh, we have some music out and one of our music directors, you know, they come to me and ask, hey, do you have any ideas? Da, da, da. And I'm like, maybe. Let me <laughs> see if I can get something to you. I so, will, yeah. yeah. Right. So I have a lot of experience with writing gospel songs and I started to dive into, you know, the R&B and pop world. I actually wrote the R&B and pop and inspirational music before gospel, but then I kind of got in the gospel lane and was right in that lane. Yep. And now I'm kind of back into the pop R&B world. So I mean, you know, cool. who yeah. says you have to stay with one? Yeah. Just like out of the box. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Well, where can people find you? Tell the world where we can stalk you. <laughs> okay. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram. Insta. Instagram. <laughs> Instagram. You can follow me on Instagram. It's just my name, Jerome Godwin with the Roman numeral three. Because I'm the third. Jerome Godwin the third. The third. And that's uh, pretty much across all social media except for YouTube. It's Romy Sings on YouTube. On Spotify, it's Jerome Godwin. I have one song out. It's called My Everything. It's actually a gospel project. Okay. So yeah, it's a little gospel feel to get you and you know a little uplifted. It's an uplifting song for sure. So amazing. Yeah. Well cool. Well definitely follow him on all the things. All the things. And watch all the performances. I mean the blind is yes. amazing and there's just more awesomeness in store. So mm-hmm. thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Anytime.
Thank truly you. anytime. And thank you for watching. Bye.